Hi guys and welcome to today's video which is going to be based as you might have seen in the title on the ASRock Radeon RX 5500 XT Phantom Gaming graphic card and today we're going to do some tests uh, based on a couple of games and I'm basically going to compare it to the older version well not the in the same uh, class but uh, definitely an interesting card which I already did a review so ASRock Radeon RX 590 gaming Phantom Gaming so yeah it's going to be interesting now the graphic card is definitely smaller than the RX 590 uh, Phantom Gaming and but it still does have the same chassis basically the same concept of the passive cooler and how the backplate is placed. I don't have to mention that the whole Phantom Gaming Alliance and the Phantom Gaming uh, editions from ASRock really look outstanding especially with the lines and everything and it really has a nice RGB uh, parts where it just looks amazing. Uh, you could manage everything through the uh, ASRock Polychrome RGB and adjust the RGB lights as you wish. Now when it comes to some product specifications and key features when we're talking about the ASRock Radeon RX 5500 XT you have the base clock going uh, at uh, 1685 uh, megahertz you have the boost clock going up to 1845 megahertz the memory is 8 gigabytes GDDR6 uh, interface you have three times display ports 1.4 with DSC uh, 1.2a and you have one HDMI 2.0b power connectors you do need 8 pin connector from your power supply to power up the graphic card second gen 7 nanometers GPU with PCI Express 4.0 support uh, some of the AMD Radeon specification features basically it supports uh, Radeon uh, image sharpening, async compute, driver optimizations and Radeon FreeSync to HDR now I have more stuff that I need to say. It has a, it's a dual fan design, which are optimized for better cooling uh, capabilities. So when the graphic card is not under heavy load, it, the fans don't spin. And I do have to say, loads of graphic cards are actually having that option right now. But at uh, heavy loads, when you're gaming and uh, rendering stuff and using your GPU, do during that period the fans start to spin since the temperature goes up a bit but when it comes to design I really like the Phantom Gaming design on all their products but the graphic card looks amazing especially with the uh, stylish metal backplate which has the PG logo and you have all the lines going through and of course what I already mentioned it has a polychrome uh, RGB sync so you can see right here this Thing lights up. Now let's talk about how the RX 5500 XT performed uh, during the same games that I played uh, on RX 590. That means we're going to talk about Tomb Raider, Witcher 3 and PUBG. Tomb Raider on high details, so basically the details were the same on RX 590 and RX 5500 XT. The RX 590 had 72 FPS uh, but the RX 5500 XT had 70 FPS on the average and the temperature was actually uh, higher on RX 590 by 10 degrees with same load almost same load at 2% that's nothing so 10 degrees more on RX 590 definitely in this uh, one the RX 5500 wins now Witcher 3 here is the catch High details on RX 5500 XT, we had 98% average load, 67 Celsius degrees and the VRMs on the graphic card were going maximum to 76 Celsius degrees, while the RX 590 on ultra details went to 60 FPS with 69 Celsius degrees. So that's 11 FPS more in average with the RX 590. And finally we have the PUBG. 
I played PUBG on medium details with the RX 5500 XT. We got 96 FPS average, 98% load with 67 Celsius degrees and we RMs were going up to 76. Uh, high details, PUBG RX 590, 100 FPS average but the temperature was 72. So the conclusion is RX 5500 XT is basically a nice card without a doubt. The price range is definitely the same as the RX 590 but this is a newer card, it has definitely a better cooling and lower temperatures slightly lower FPS depending on the game because we had Tomb Raider on same details and it had lower temperatures uh, and a higher and a bit higher FPS uh, in other games it was like very very close but I would say I would say that the win takes the RX 5500 XT depending on the processor as well without a doubt. Uh, if you want to go with the older card like RX 590 and still have a better cooling, I think since I was testing the RX 5500 XT in this case which kind of has a bit closed up front, I think the temperatures would be lower. So if you're aiming for something that runs cooler but still you get enough FPS to play decently, I would definitely suggest the RX 5500 XT from ASRock. Just to give you a comparison, this is RX 590 uh, Phantom Gaming. You can see that it basically almost looks the same. Uh, the same design on the passive cooler here, uh, it's sticking out. I would really prefer as it is right here that they kind of not push the PCB board but just kind of extended it a bit and closed the uh, part here making additional some sort of a grill and that would be basically really cool and you can see that the RX 5500 XT is shorter which doesn't make sense because the RX 5500 XT has better cooling than the RX 50, uh, uh, 590 so yeah guys I mean this is it uh, definitely uh, something uh, interesting with two different generation cards that can achieve almost the same FPS, a bit of a difference, nothing too drastical, but then again, you have a drastical difference in temperatures. So, yeah, I'll put the links below for the ASRock RX 5500 XT Phantom Gaming, which kind of gives you ability to put them in a smaller case uh, with nice airflow even keep the temperatures lower than it already is and it still works nice in PUBG, it works nice in Tomb Raider, Witcher 3, you can basically run anything on 1080p. That's it. Thank you for watching, don't forget to check the links below, don't forget to like if you like the video and of course if you want to see more content from me don't forget to subscribe for future videos. Thank you and bye bye.